ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل كل شيء وهدى ورحمة لقوم يؤمنون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد عليه وعلى آله أفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم as we continue our discussion and analysis of the stories that are in the Quran, uh, just remember, subhanAllah, to uh, you know, take whatever we discuss uh, together and read the ayat on your own and, and, and continue to analyze them and continue to, subhanAllah, think about how practical they are in terms of your, subhanAllah, own lives and, and try to have that connection with the ayat. Uh, a lot of a lot of times we unfortunately look at the ayat of the Quran and and they sound good uh, they, they 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 they're good to read uh, but we don't go the the step or the 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 necessary step we don't take the necessary step to really really uh, allow for these ayat to fully fully uh, resonate uh, with us and to fully fully uh, reside and and situate themselves in in our hearts to the point where we begin to actually look at these situations that happen in our lives and whatever situation we're going through, we can think of an ayah in the Quran that is, you know, subhanAllah, uh, relatable. Uh, you're going through a difficult moment, an ayah in the Quran is relatable. You're going through another one, an ayah in the Quran is relatable. And one of the things that I want to mention before we start, inshallah, today's, uh, you know, uh, section from the Quran that we're going to be studying, some people uh, ask, and, and the Prophet Muhammad was asked this question as well, if the Quran, uh, you know, was, was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, as one, uh, main uh, one 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 large cohesive uh, complete uh, book uh, and revelation. Why was it given to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in stages? In stages. Why was it given slowly and and periodically? And Allah subhanahu wa taala says, كذلك لنثبت به فؤادك. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, this is or the reason for this is so that it would come slowly, so that your heart would be firmly. Uh, you know, uh, settled and, 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 and your, your, the Quran would settle firmly in your heart and you'll be able to relate it to events in your life. I'll give you an example. Imagine if I were to just give you a, a very, very long talk for five hours, uh, you would only retain some uh, bits and pieces at the end of the talk. But if I were to take you and, and, and go through a journey together and, and walk through uh, some, some, you know, for example, go through a journey like we're talking about the journey between Musa and Khidr, uh, go through a journey and every time we come across a specific area or we see a specific action or we see specific people, we uh, begin to share some uh, stories that are very practical or relatable. Then now you have uh, a physical uh, area or uh, a, a, an indication uh, or a reminder or a situation that would allow you to uh, relate the ayat of the Quran to. And so the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, the Quran would come at very specific moments to, uh, to, to address specific issues that were happening during his life, during the companions' lives. So now the companions, when they're reading these ayat, they're not just ayat, they're not just revelation from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala that are just going to be memorized, but no, these ayat are going to address and be the solutions to very, very uh, practical and very, very uh, important issues that they're going through. And subhanAllah, the section that we're going to read together today, inshallah, is going to clarify that. We're going to be, inshallah, reciting, <coughs> bismillah, from Surah An-Nisa, we're going to be reciting from Ayah 105. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلنا إليك الكتاب بالحق بالحق لتحكم بين الناس بما أراك الله ولا تكن للخائنين خصيما واستغفر الله ولا تجادل عن الذين يختالون أنفسهم إن الله لا يحب من كان خوانا أثيما يستخفون من الناس ولا يستخفون من الله وهو معهم إذ يبيتون ما لا يرضى من القول وكان الله بما يعملون محيطا ها أنتم هؤلاء جادلتم عنهم جادلتم 
جادلتم عنهم في الحياة الدنيا فمن يجادل الله عنهم فمن يجادل الله عنهم يوم القيامة أم من يكون أم من يكون عليهم وكيلا ومن يعمل سوءا أو يظلم نفسه أو يظلم نفسه ثم يستغفر الله يجد يجد الله غفورا رحيما ومن يكسب إثما فإنما يكسبه على نفسه وكان الله عليما حكيما ومن يكسب خطيئة أو إثما ثم يرم به ثم يرم به بريئا فقد احتمل فقد احتمل بهتانا وإثما مبينا. As you were listening to these ayat and perhaps reading the uh, translation or the uh, attempt at translating the beautiful ayat of the Quran, it is one thing to hear the ayat and one thing to even understand the words but it's another to have a story that will go with the ayat that we're reciting that will go with the verses or will go with the signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us that will go with the context and the Quran comes subhanAllah to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in stages it comes to him in, in context so that there is a, a story that is relatable subhanAllah and this goes to teach us something very important about grasping knowledge and sharing knowledge and teaching or learning in general Knowledge has to be relatable and the best way subhanAllah to learn is through experience and this is why the Quran comes in this form subhanAllah. So let's start the story. Where is the story taking place? The story is taking place in Medina, the city of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him sallallahu alayhi wasallam. When is the story taking place? The story is taking place a few years, five years after the, or three years after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated to the city of Medina. So this is early Medanese period. This is the early stage, the, the, the build up years, the, the, time, the, the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now he's spending, uh, investing in the people of Medina, trying to get them to overcome their, their, their uh, you know, old habits, trying to get them to overcome their cultural uh, associations or affiliations that you know, are subhanAllah, uh, ca have caused so much commotion and so much tension. So as you know, there are at the time, there is the Aus and the Khazraj, which are the to two main tribes in the city of Medina, two main Arab tribes. And then there are Jewish tribes also residing in the city of Medina. Now sometimes, unfortunately, uh, you know, if you look at the, uh, the way that some of the historians or some of the general uh, people who read the Quran, they may look at the Quran and they may think, the Quran always portrays uh, people of the Jewish faith in a negative light. That is not true. And this story comes to subhanAllah indicate that we should not make general uh, brush uh, statements and we should not just brush an entire people uh, with the same kind of paintbrush. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran itself, the Quran says, Laysu sawa'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they are not the same. From the people of the book, min ahlil kitab, you will find people who are reciting the Quran. They will be great people, they will be, uh, or reciting their scripture. They will be great people who will uh, be humble and they will be very, very uh, dedicated to the message that they have uh, received as long as it is the original message that, of, of course, Musa brought. And so here we uh, find something, subhanAllah, that is very, very uh, important and find something that is very interesting in these ayat. Many, many lessons, subhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins by saying, Inna anzalna ilayka al-kitaba bil-haqqi li tahkuma bayna al-nasi bima araka Allah. We have given you the book, O Muhammad, so that you may rule, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so that you may rule between the people based on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you to see, or based on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows you. And so here, this story is going to teach us something very important. You may see something with your own eyes, but it may not be the same as what is actually there. Appearance and reality may not always be subhanAllah in sync. So what happens? As we mentioned, three years after the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, settles in Medina, the Aus and the Khazraj are still overcoming their, uh, you know, their rivalry that they had before the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, approached and resided in Medina. 
And the Prophet Muhammad is trying to overcome and trying to soothe the hearts and trying to overcome any tension and he's still trying to preserve that fabric of society, that new fabric of the city of Medina and trying to get rid of any affiliations that will hurt the new unity that is created. Now this story subhanAllah happens after one of the battles. One of the battles, there's a new Muslim. There's a new Muslim who just accepted Islam. You know, people were coming to Islam in stages. And this new Muslim, uh, his name is, uh, his, you know, th this new Muslim who came to Islam, his name is Bashir. And he has just come to Islam, so uh, he's a little bit, uh, yani he's, he's trying to learn, but he doesn't have, subhanAllah, as, as, as uh, much information as the others, uh, or has not fully understood the cohesive message of Islam as others. So this, uh, n you know, this new Muslim would go to battle with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And others, of course, would go to battle with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was another individual who was also a more recent, a more recent comer to Islam. And he went with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the battle, and they fought, of course, on the same side, and they were able to, alhamdulillah, by the will of Allah, defeat the enemy. And on their way back, of course, there were many, uh, you know, droppings from the opposing side, as we mentioned before. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he picks the shield that was uh, left, a shield, a beautiful shield that was left uh, by some of the uh, you know, uh, enemies who uh, dropped it. And now the Prophet Muhammad Sallam is trying to find or find somebody that is worthy of this gift of the shield. We will come back after the break, insha'Allah. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد عليه وعلى آله أفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم. so the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him صلى الله عليه وسلم he finds this man who also accepted Islam and he's a more recent newcomer to Islam than Bashir and he gives him the shield as a gift. And back then, of course, the people of Medina, the people who are coming to Islam uh, knew they did not have much wealth and they were struggling financially. Of course, uh, at the very beginning of the da'wah, the beginning of the uh, call to Islam, the companions and the Prophet Muhammad Sallam and the people around him did not have much. So to have a shield was considered something very valuable. And so the Prophet Muhammad Sallam saw, uh, you know, uh, humility and sincerity in this individual. So ga he gave him, subhanAllah, uh, the, the, the shield. Some of the, uh, some of the uh, narrations mention that this man who received uh, the shield, his name is uh, Rifa'ah. And so here we see something very interesting. Bashir, uh, he looks at the Prophet Muhammad Sallam while he is giving the shield to this other man. And Bashir feels a little bit uh, jealous. He says to himself, well, hold on a second. I'm also a new Muslim. Why didn't I get the shield? Uh, what about me? Um, why, why? I deserve something too. And so he decided, you know what? I'm going to take matters into my own hands. When, when, when the man who got the shield, the owner, the rightful owner of the shield, he went home and he put the shield down in his house and he stored it. And he stored it, uh, you know, with the, with the curved side down and the opening up. And then he put some, uh, you know, he put some, uh, imagine some uh, flour or some starch on top of it just to keep it mounted. And Bashir decided, you know what, I want the shield for myself. So he said, if the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not give it to me, well, I'm going to take action or I'm going to take matters into my own hand. And what he did is he actually decided he intended to steal the shield. So imagine this, subhanAllah, he walks out uh, in the middle of the, uh, the narration, say, at, at, the, at the, the early part of the night, he walks towards uh, the house of, um, of Rifa'a ibn Nu'man. And what he decides to do, he decides to basically go inside and, uh, you know, uh, some narration say climbed over the wall, but nonetheless, he entered the house and he picked up the shield and he walked literally out of the door and took the shield back to his house, hoping that nobody could see him. Unfortunately, the person who stole the shield and the person who, uh, the rightful owner of the shield, they are from two different tribes, the Aus and the Khazraj. And now here's a, a difficult situation because when this, if, if this were to become public, uh, this could be blown out of proportion by the hypocrites of the city of Medina and they would actually try to uh, get the two sides to uh, go against each other and try to basically uh, create uh, the fitna that existed before the Prophet Muhammad uh, came to Medina. So this is a bit of a tense situation that could cause uh, almost a civil war uh, between the two tribes if it were to be blown out of proportion. And remember there were hypocrites in the city of Medina that were waiting for any opportunity between the Aus and the Khazraj to try to basically cause 
conflict between the two tribes, subhanAllah, with the intention of uh, you know, undermining the, the unity that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is trying to establish. So what happens? As, Bish, as, as, the, as, the, uh, as Bashir is going with, with the shield, uh, trying to steal the shield, he gets, subhanAllah, caught to, uh, by, by one person who happens to be the uncle, happens to be the uncle or a, a, a relative of the person who the shield was stolen from, the rightful owner of the shield. So imagine the uncle of the guy who owns the shield, he sees Bashir stealing the shield. And when he sees this, of course, he gets uh, a bit upset and he confronts Bashir. But Bashir says no and he runs away and he basically says, it's, it's your word against mine, nobody will ever know. And so he decides to basically uh, go ahead and keep the shield to himself. And he thought, hoping that subhanAllah, uh, you know, nobody would e eventually find out and, 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 and it wouldn't just, it wouldn't uh, be uh, something too, too large, he, he assumed at least. Other narrations say that, you know, he was caught, but the individual, the uncle who did catch him, did not approach him about it. Rather, he tried to basically go directly to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And when he went directly to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he told him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I have come to you to tell you that I have witnessed with my own eyes an act of theft. And the Prophet Muhammad was disappointed to hear this in his own city. People from his own, from, 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 from subhanAllah, that the Muslims are stealing subhanAllah from one another, the Aus and the Khazraj stealing from one another. He was very, very disappointed to hear that. And he was wary because he knew that if this wasn't controlled and if this information got into the hands of the wrong people, they would use it as a, as a, as a means to create propaganda and of course cause a stir in the community, subhanAllah. And so the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam what does he do he sends investigators to investigate so the investigators come to uh, you know bashir's house and they knock on his door and they come and they say well news has reached us that you know something in your house uh, may not necessarily belong to you and the prophet muhammad sallam is requesting your permission to search so imagine the prophet muhammad sallam had a system in place where uh, you know the, the the houses could be searched uh, literally a search warrant was given uh, and, and, and the Prophet Muhammad Sallam sent these individuals to look for the shield. They came into the house of Bashir. Bashir said, come on in, no problem, I have nothing to hide. And they came into the house and they looked everywhere, but they couldn't find the shield. How is that possible? It's a, it's a, it's a good question. And Bashir did steal the shield, but now the shield is no longer in the house. So what did Bashir do? What, what happened to the shield? The messengers or, the, or the, the investigators of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sent to look for the shield, they go back to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and they tell him, Ya Rasulullah, we looked everywhere, but we could not find the shield. We looked everywhere in the house of Bashir, but we could not find the shield. And so the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, was a little bit uh, confused. Uh, what, you know, what happened? Who took it? So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, was, you know, sent the investigators to investigate a little further. Bashir knew that the investigators would eventually, subhanAllah, uh, you know, get their hands onto something. So he wanted to prevent the investigators from you know uh, researching further and he wanted to give them uh, or make it easier for them or just put an end to the situation so what did he do imagine he committed a, a, an even greater crime than the crime of theft subhanallah or he added onto uh, you know his his counts you know, imagine a count of theft and now he's adding another subhanallah uh, you know crime and what does he do he comes to a few of his family members he brings three witnesses and he tells them, please help me out here. Come with me. Let's go to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or go to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yourselves and tell the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that it was actually uh, a Jewish man who stole the shield. A man known by the name Zaid. And so imagine Bashir here, he doesn't want to uh, get blamed or be held accountable for the crime. So he wants to blame SubhanAllah somebody else. And he blames this innocent Jewish man. Now, the, some of the narrations or some of the historians have said that uh, the, 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 this individual uh, that, that, uh, that, that was blamed, this Jewish individual, uh, of course, he did have a, a previous uh, problem with theft. You know, he may have committed a minor offense before. So it was easily believable. It was like, okay, let's blame somebody who had, uh, you know, a, a criminal record before. Although minor, it would still be more believable. And of course, the, some of the Jewish tribes at this time were showing a little bit of, of hostility towards the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So it was believable. It was believable. And Bashir thought he could get away with it. And, and it was, it was a, you know, from his, from his own eyes at least, it was a great plan. You know, stealing and then blaming somebody else for it. 
who is innocent, subhanAllah, just to get away with uh, you know, the, the, the crime that he has committed. And so what does Bashir do? Bashir actually, uh, he, he sends for some people to bury the shield in the yard or in the garden of this innocent uh, man who happens to be from the Jewish faith. And now when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is approached by the three witnesses, remember those three witnesses that the Prophet Muhammad, uh, that, that uh, Bashir hired or uh, basically paid or used uh, you know, his familial connection with them to get them to uh, testify or uh, you know, basically witness uh, for Bashir and against the Jewish man, they decided to go to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and tell him, Ya Rasulullah, we're just here to give you uh, a, a word uh, of advice. We just want to you know, keep the city uh, ha you know, uh, peaceful and, and calm and we want to eliminate any uh, difficulty or any uh, issues and what we want to do is we want to actually tell you that the person who stole the shield is a Jewish man by the name Zaid. When the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard this, he sent again a few more investigators to investigate. These investigators would go to the house of the Jewish man Zaid, knock on his door and tell him we have come to look through your house because news has reached us that you may have perhaps uh, you know, something in your house that may not belong to you. And so the Jewish man, of course, he did not, he had no idea what is going on. And so he said, no problem at all. Go ahead, come and search. There's nothing to hide. And they came in and they searched. And what did they find? They actually, subhanAllah, found the shield hidden in, uh, in the house or buried in the house of this Jewish man. So based on appearance, based on you know, the reality or the presented reality, the concocted reality, it seemed like it was actually the Jewish man who stole the shield. Now subhanAllah, this is very interesting. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallam would eventually uh, you know, be uh, told by these investigators that he sent, we went, we investigated, and the reality is yes, we did find the uh, shield in the Jewish man's home. The Prophet Muhammad Sallam was upset, and he was upset for a few reasons. Num number one, he was upset because uh, the uncle, remember the uncle that was related to the person uh, that the shield was stolen from. Remember he came and he blamed Bashir. He said, I saw Bashir with my own eyes. The Prophet Muhammad Sallam, you know, he thought that this was being done to create tension between the Aus and the Khazraj, when in reality, that's not what happened. It was, you know, supposedly a Jewish man who stole the shield. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallam was upset and he actually came on the mimbar and he gave us a, a, a lecture or a reminder for the Muslim community, stay connected, stay united, do not blame one another, do not go back to the ways of the Jahiliyyah, have trust towards one another. So imagine, subhanAllah, it seemed to many Muslims at the time that this act, uh, the, the, the original claim made by the relative of, 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 um, of, um, uh, of the individual who uh, subhanAllah uh, lost the shield, uh, it, it seemed like he was doing that to cause a little bit of commotion, a little bit of tension. And so what the Prophet Muhammad Sallam did is after giving the sermon, he uh, reminded the Muslims to stay calm, to stay peaceful, and to not go back to the old ways of the Jahiliyyah. Now things get interesting because the Prophet Muhammad Sallam uh, you know, issues an arrest warrant for the Jewish man based on the evidence. The evidence seems to uh, fall in the favor of Bashir uh, and, and, and it seems to uh, fall uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the favor of the witnesses that also came to Bashir as well. And so the Prophet Muhammad Sallam issues an arrest warrant and the uh, Jewish man is a and the Jewish man is arrested and when the Jewish man is arrested he is brought to the rabbis and the rabbis are basically going to uh, try to uh, come up with a way to punish him. Now things are going to get more interesting and we're going to inshallah resume in the next halaqa. Barakallahu feekum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب ما كان حديثا يفترى ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل كل شيء وهدى ورحمة لقوم يؤمنون